Well, welcome to this tutorial which is going to look at creating trails in Houdini. The first thing I want to do is make this box move along the curve that I've got here. And I can do that by selecting the box object and into parameter editor choose the curve object as its path. And then in order to get it to move along the path I need to keyframe this position parameter here. So at frame 1 it can be 0, so I'll Alt and left click this to create a keyframe and then at frame 100 we'll put it at position 1 and again Alt and left click to keyframe so we should find that the box is moving along the path the SOP which creates trails in Houdini is called the Trail SOP I've dived inside the box object here and let me append a trail sop and see what we get. Well, we're not getting anything very much. And there's a good reason for that. Because the animation that we have here is done at the scene level. It's a transformation of the box object. Here at the ge geometry level, this box is stationary and the trail is seeing a stationary box and thus is not able to create a trail. So let's delete this and in order to bring this animation information down into the geometry level I'm going to create another geometry node which we'll call trails. I'm going to dive inside and delete the file and I'm going to lay down an object merge node. Now what an object merge does is bring in geometry and possibly animation information from another object. So in this case uh, the object we want is our box and in order to bring in the animation information I need to transform it into this object. Now if I lay down a trail swap here. Uh, we can see already that we have a trail. Let me increase the number of boxes that we can see in the trail. And let's play the animation a bit. And we're getting a trail. In fact, the kind of trail that I want to create is a sequence of lines rather than uh, these boxes. But before I do that, I want to ensure that we're only creating trails for the rear of the box. So let's select just the box. I'm going to hide other objects. And press S to enter selection mode for, for primitive selection. Select the back face and hit the delete key. What this does is delete the back face. We want to delete everything except the back face, so on the delete stop we tick the delete non-selected. And I'm going to go into wireframe view so that we can see that better. And so we're getting a trail of uh, the back face of the box. If I want to get lines, I need to connect as polygons. And that produces lines. Let's have a look at that. Well, something odd is happening here. We're getting polygons that are connected. And that's because we've got closed rows selected here. So if I take that off, we can see that we're getting polygons that are not connected. Let's increase the trail length to 10. And the cache to 10. And I'm going to change the trail increment to 2. That gives us a point every other frame. The polygon lines don't look too good so I'm going to convert them using a convert SOP into NURBS curves. The next thing I'd like to do is create some turbulence at the end of these curves which is an effect you quite often see in commercial productions. 
and I'm, there are a number of ways to do this, uh, but I'm going to use a VOP surface SOP. But before that, I want to create an attribute on these which lets me vary the amount of turbulence according to where we are on the curve. So I need to add an attribute which is 0 here at the front of the curve and 1 at the end of the curve. Let's have a look at the point numbers. We can do that by switching on point number view here and see how our curves are constructed. Well, as you can see, what we're getting is each of these, so 0 to 9, and the next one is 20 to 29, and so on. So we're going to add our attribute using an attribute create. Sop. And I'm going to call this add rank and I'm going to call the attribute rank. And I want to be able to visualize this attribute. Let's turn off the display of point numbers. So with my cursor over the 3D view, I'm going to hit D to bring up a display options pane. And in my case, it's rather large. And what I need to do is, that when we have this parameter custom, I need to create attribute text. And then right click on it, and click edit. And I'm going to call this rank, and it's going to pick up the rank attribute and display it as text. Let's close that. Now at the moment, uh, you can see that the rank attribute is zero everywhere. Let's try editing it and see what we get. I'm going to take the point number and divide it by the length of the trail, which I can access using channel function. And referring back to the parameter in the trail SOP itself. So this is taking the point value and dividing it by the trail length here. And what we're getting now is values that range from 1 to 1.9, 2 to 2.9, and so on. So I want something that ranges from 0 to more or less 1. So let's use another function here, which is frac. Now the frac function gives us just the fractional part a bit after the decimal point. So now we have values going from 0 to 0 0.9. And in fact I'm going to want this end to be 0 and that end to be near a 1. So let's use 1 minus frac. And I think that gives us what we want. So we can turn off our display by clicking on this and deselecting rank. So let's leave this part of the tutorial there, and in the next part we'll look at how to create our VOP SOP.